Hello everybody, welcome into the Hobby Bar, this is Jason, and welcome. Today we'll be cracking on continuing with this Air Sorceress that we started last time. Today I wanted to fix up the patchiness in the cloak and the dress piece coats, and also play around with some Vallejo game, game inks. <clears throat> um, so, We'll go ahead and get started here with the, I believe it's Castellan Green base coat from Citadel. And we'll clean up the cloak patchiness. Uh, I wanted to do more of a, try a more rapid fiery kind of approach on this one. Uh, just to see if it does a little better uh, instead of making a more stream alternative style. Uh, we we'll still want to keep the chill attitude and atmosphere though, so if y'all hobby, then feel free to jump in, join along. Though this will be a shorter version of what I have otherwise done in the past, just to see how it goes. Um, but with that, I'll also try to hold up the model a bit closer in a lot of these shots. I'm trying to get used to holding it up for the camera and stuff. So, we'll, uh, we'll go through fi fixing up the cloak, though, with this green, and then we'll uh, move on to having some fun afterwards. Uh, but first, we need to also get the uh, blouse, I believe. Uh, I'm more terrible with clothing names. So, for that, we're going to use some... Army Painter Light Tone Quick Shade, and basically I want to add just a little bit of shading into the into, into it to make it basically a um, linen sort of cloth, um, slightly dirty linen. So it'll be fun um, because it's sort of a similar technique to what I do for. Um, my daughters of Kate, and it'll be a uh, it'll be uh, pretty easy to get that linen done. But just figured I'd show it here, going over that with some of the light tone, um, and it'll be pretty easy to get done. Um, go ahead and get this knocked out, and then we'll move on to. I believe the tress after this. Yep. We're gonna go ahead and get some corn red. I need to get some more, to be honest, because this thing is really not happy. So, trying to use the last little bits I can get out of it. But I want to try to finish up the slight, uh, not quite full finish that uh, I had going on for a bit there. So, go ahead and coat some of the areas with the corn red, just to bring it up to par with everything else. Then we'll get into playing with some of the inks, and that's the fun part of the episode. So, for the inks, I actually start here with the black Vallejo Gaming. Um, it, uh, as somebody who hasn't used inks in the past for painting, it is, but has used a lot of Citadel stuff. It's basically a thicker contrast paint, for lack of a better way to put it, because it still tints everything, similar to a contrast paint, but it doesn't run to recesses like a contrast paint, if that makes much sense. So like some of the stronger contrast paints would just tint everything and then still sort of go towards recesses and make a stronger buildup of the color in the recesses, but still like sort of tint the raised areas. With the inks, I've noticed they just tint everything. Like it doesn't matter how much is in there, it's all basically the same amount of tinting. At least with these from uh, Vega. So, uh, we get in here with the black on both eyes, just because I wanted to give her sort of that 
ethereal look for for now. I'll figure out what to do with the eyes a bit later, like if I want to go back in and maybe give them a bit of a wispy bluish color or something. Figure out something later if I want to tackle that. But I was pretty happy with how the black ink worked for the eyes, so I decided to branch out a bit more and break out the yellow uh, game ink. So I'm a big fan of yellow, and but I also get that it's a real hard color to paint, generally speaking. So I wanted to see how this would go with the yellow game ink, and figured why not do it for the hair, give her blonde hair for the hair sorceress. And it went on really well. Um, it didn't really gunk up much, and it just gave us solid color. Uh, it was... I was pleasantly surprised. So, I'll probably play some more with the yellow and the red on the leaves on the cloak. Because I tried adding a bit of yellow on a few of them, and then I threw red over all of them. And I think I'll, I'll need to play a bit with the yellow and red to make some of them orange and sort of get, and maybe add some green into it, you know, give it sort of that fall-autumn look to the cloak. Even though she's an air sorceress, there's leaves on there, maybe it's fall, so there's a lot of leaves blowing around. Or something. We'll come up with a story about it later. But, um... After the hair, I was pretty happy with it. Both of these were over basically a white background. The eyes were over her skin tone. Um, though I tried to keep it out of her eyes. And then this is over a white, and it's coming through real strong. So I wanted to play with the colors some more. So what we'll do after applying yellow to the hair and a few of the leaves is we'll actually move on to trying some of the red ink on corn red, just to see what that kind of does to the finish. And it sort of brightened it up and made it into a stronger red, and we'll get into that here in a bit. Same with adding the black green onto darker areas of the cloak. So what I'll probably end up having to do is play with mixing some inks just to get different colors and go from there and with that I think it'll be I will really be happy with how these go honestly for the hair I probably just need to give it a light dry brush of pale yellow at this point and I'll have blonde hair on her like I think that's all I'll have to do and that'll be super easy um which has me pretty excited about how this model turned out with how easy it kind of is. So with that we'll move on to adding some of the red gaming onto the palette. So for the red, again we're trying it out on the uh, on the dress just to sort of build up some of the color in some areas and see how it goes over the corn red. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. It sort of builds it up to a slightly stronger, brighter red, more vibrant red. And yeah, that's basically all I wanted it to do. I did also want to try seeing if it would cover the uh, spots of green on the dress, which it kind of doesn't. It sort of just tints it, so I'll probably have to come back in with some corn red and fix it up. But otherwise, yeah. It, the highlights on the dress just like I wanted it to. But I was noticing it was still a little flat, so I wanted to get in some uh, cooler color into the recesses. So after applying some of this red all over on some of the highlight spots on the dress, I was pretty happy with it though. Um, it was a nice vibrant red that it built up to. And playing with inks for first go around. Pretty happy with it. Um, next, we will be going ahead and adding some Violet Game Ink onto the palette. Uh, for this, I didn't want to go straight to the Violet, 
because I feel like it would have left a really sharp line between it. So I get some and I try mixing it with some of the red ink. And it kind of works. Uh, it didn't quite give me a purple enough color. I feel like I mixed it a little bit too much red, probably. But it does give it a, it does give it a subtle highlight. And I was pretty happy with it. Or a subtle shadow. Not highlight. <laughs> So I was pretty happy with how it turned out, all in all. Um, yeah, definitely worth more playing with these inks. Um, though it will require a different set of skills, like mixing up colors properly, and mixing to between colors and all that. Um, because it goes on thinner than the paints, I do want to play with it more. Um, this jump is to the normal green gaming. It is a fairly vibrant green, though, which I wasn't expecting it to be as vibrant as it is when I put it on here. I was like, let's kind of take it back by it. So, um, I just use it as a highlight color on the cloak, though. So I paint all the raised areas with this vibrant green, and sort of try to leave the shadow areas untouched. Because what we can then do is come back in with the green black, and try out that game ink to, uh, to see how that goes, and I'm pretty happy with how that goes too. Um, again, I could probably work on some of the blending between them, maybe mix in the colors a bit, mix in a medium, <clears throat> this way they can work together a bit better, but uh, all in all, it's been a pretty happy experiment with this one. I tried upscaling the uh, recording a little bit to uh, 2.7k, just to uh, just to allow me a few more options in the edit booth, and we'll see how that goes. Um, right now we're wrapping up the green though, and uh, I'll see if I can try to zoom around a bit and make it a little fancier so you can see what's going on a bit instead of always the same pulled out view. Uh, last color we're trying today though of the inks is the black green so we get some of that on the palette and we and get some on the brush and we're putting it over castellan green which sort of matches the color of the black green um which is interesting to me i wouldn't think of calling sort of olive drab color green black green but uh yeah, it works. Uh, no more can I say. It just, it just works, as it were. So for the last call, I'm trying this little uh, jewelry spinner out, just so you can get an idea of how the model looks from different angles, and more of a straight-on view, and more of a fixed position. And yeah, hopefully, uh, see y'all on the next video. So have a good one, everybody. Take care.